Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers and hi, I'm a carb addiction doc and today I want to talk about a conundrum, a conundrum that is happening in the minds of the lipid heart algorithm medicine doctors out there, the traditional medical doctors that follow recipes to treat everybody. And the concept that they are buying very heavily into as a protective concept is called, it's a fancy word, it's called euglycemia. The word euglycemia just means normal blood sugar. And here's the bizarre part. These cardiologists, and this came up at a cardiology conference that was recently held, are heavily focused on medications and drugs and strategies to develop euglycemia because they're more and more realizing that the commonest cause of the cardiovascular disease, cardiovascular and arrhythmia. So when you look at the heart, the two commonest causes of uh, non-congenital, self-caused injury to the heart are plaque buildup and clots forming in the blood vessels and the plumbing of the cardiovascular system, and also damage to the electrical system or the nerves of the heart. These are the two things that are happening. And in fact, sometimes, and this is bizarre, sometimes the heart cells in the blood vessels can actually take on an electrical generating component. So they become electrical generators in the blood vessels. So you've got this coalescence, this combination of cells that are either from the nervous or the electrical system in the plumbing system. Think about that. Think about having wires in your plumbing system. So that's what's happening in the heart with a disease of hyperglycemia, high blood sugar. And the cardiologists are now being becoming more and more understanding and obsessed with euglycemia, normal blood sugar. But the way they do this, because they can't wrap their heads around the fact that fat, fat in your diet and cholesterol in your diet causes heart disease. They, they cannot... Uh, 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 <laughs> sort these two things out. So they recognize, and for some bizarre reason, they're still blaming fat in our diet for diabetes, or at least the diabetes and the high blood sugars. They don't call it diabetes. High blood sugars are caused genetically. That this is suddenly this massive genetic rise that's happened in the last 50 years. Be that as it may, it boggles my mind. And I understand why, because they, there's direct conflict between the concept of euglycemia and their lipid heart hypothesis. The two are polar opposite. You can't have one without, without the other. But more and more, they're starting to understand that the people that are most vulnerable to getting cardiovascular and arrhythmia problems, electrical problems and plumbing problems with the heart, are people with high blood sugar. And typically people with high blood sugar are called eventually diabetic. But the precursor to that high blood sugar is insulin resistance. And they understand that as a concept, as an entity. But they find it incapable of walking that backwards to diet. They cannot make that association for the most part. Some are coming on board. More and more are being forced to realize this. But here's the challenge. So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, elevated blood sugar is contributing to heart disease. We know, of course, that it's fat and statins. And, and here's the bizarre disconnected part. So at this conference, um, even though they know that elevated blood sugar is causing the plaque, is causing the arrhythmias, they're using that as an indication to put people on statins to lower their cholesterol. Because now they're saying that these high carbohydrate diets are associated with high cholesterols and high LDL, and the high LDL is actually the problem, but the sugar is causing the high LDL. So they're still fixated on the cholesterol LDL problem, but now instead of, or instead of just blaming fat in the diet, they're blaming high sugar. But they can't get away from the concept that LDL and cholesterol is the problem, so they're still forcing you to be on a statin. And in fact, the the bizarre problem is that they, if you walk into their office, their algorithm tells you that your presence in their op office is an indication for you to be on a statin, even if your CAC score is zero, even if you have no evidence of disease. To my mind, that's malpractice, but they haven't figured this out. So I'm, I'm trying to get you in their heads. So everybody should be on a statin, particularly if you've got a CAC score that's a little bit higher. But even if you've got a zero, just in case. Now, their focus is heavily on euglycemia. 
because they know that elevated blood sugar leads to this high LDL, and that's a problem. Okay, at least in their mind. So follow this logic. High sugar leads to high LDL, leads to bad lipids. It actually leads to high triglycerides and low HDL. Be that as it may, they're medicating that with statins. But now they realize, oops, it's this blood sugar that connects to the high LDL. So now what they're also targeting is they're targeting high blood sugar. So the new catchword in their mentality is the word euglycemia. Let's get blood sugar down to normal rates. And if we get blood sugar down to normal rates, then these people are going to have less cardiovascular disease. So how do we get blood sugar normal? Well, there, there are two ways to do that. One is to use medications, the diabetic medications. And the other one is a ketogenic diet. Okay, so here we go. The obvious thing is don't eat carbohydrates. That's the obvious logical thing to do. But here's the problem in their minds. And this is just me sitting in their heads. The, pro <laughs> the problem with not eating carbohydrates, it means that you've got to increase your fat consumption, which they still intellectually can't wrap their heads around the fact that it's okay to eat fat, except a few of them. More and more are coming to this conclusion. And also, when you eat a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet, where you reduce your carbohydrate consumption, guess what happens? Your LDL goes up, which means you need more statins. So it's irreconcilable in their heads that a low-carbohydrate diet that gives you a high LDL does not contribute to cardiovascular disease because in their heads they know LDL and cholesterol causes cardiovascular disease. It, it just boggles my mind. So they, they actively argue against a ketogenic diet, even though it's the best way to reduce your blood sugar and get rid of your diabetes, they argue fastidiously against it for one reason, because it causes that LDL and they know the LDL is a problem. And they're now producing papers that show that people on a ketogenic diet actually have higher rates of heart disease, even though their blood sugars are lower because their LDL is high. Okay. All right. So if a low carbohydrate diet is bad for you in their minds. Well, but they know that high blood sugar is bad for you. The other way they're doing it now is putting you on more and more medications. They're becoming more and more advocates of diabetic medications, diabetes medications, to reduce blood sugar. And the problem is they don't understand how these medications work. Now, in a good way, in a bizarre good way, in a bizarre good way, they are putting people on what we call GLP-1 agonists. GLP-1 agonists actually treat insulin resistance. So they work amazingly well. We use them in our practice. That is a good drug for them to be on. So if your cardiologist wants, you, wants to put you on Ozempic or Rebelsis or uh, um, Trulicity or Manjaro, go for it, go for it, go for it. I'm in large part supportive of that to lower blood sugar. However, the, those are difficult medications to get. And if you're not truly a diabetic, those medications are uh, not supported typically by your insurance company. So now they run into that roadblock. So the other group of medications they're using is a medication called Jardians or Farsiga SGLT2 inhibitors. In other words, they're using diabetic medications to reduce blood sugar to improve cardiovascular function. If you've got cardiomyopathy, if you've got heart failure, uh, if you've got poor ejection fraction, if the function of your heart is not, is not good because of damage done by sugar, they're now using sugar-lowering medications. The problem is the side effects of those medications. The side effects of those medications are tremendously negative. I've got another video coming out on that. So here's where there's something good happening. Here's where there's something good happening. The good thing that's happening is more and more doctors, algorithm doctors, doctors that follow a recipe to treat everybody that walks through the door, those algorithm doctors are more and more starting to understand that elevated levels of sugar, hyperglycemia, whether that has reached diabetic uh, proportions or not, that hyperglycemia is not good for the heart or for the human body. So they have gone from hyperlipidemia, and they, they're still worried about hyperlipidemia, but not so much the lipids, but primarily LDL and cholesterol, which is a fraction of... Uh, okay, I don't, go down, don't, don't even want to go down that road, but they're worried about LDL and cholesterol. That's their big worry, okay? A little bit triglycerides. 
But they're, they're now more and more getting worried about and looking at high blood sugar. So they're starting to test A1C, they're starting to test blood sugar. But then the paradox for them is that the best diet to drop your blood sugar is a low, low carbohydrate, higher fat diet, which makes what they believe to be the problem worse. So what they're doing now is, well, we can't do that. We can't promote a ketogenic diet. They may say eat less sugar, cut out the added sugars, but still eat a lot of whole grains, still eat a lot of vegetables, still eat a lot of the whole sugars because it's glycemic index that they're brought into. How quickly your blood sugar goes up rather than the total amount of sugar you get in. Um, but now they're putting you on medications for sugar while they put you on a statin. So now you've got a medication that's destroying your cholesterol and LDL transport molecule, which transports fat around your body, and you're on medications to drop your blood sugar. Medication, 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 because they cannot wrap their heads around the fact that it is the diet that is causing the problem. So they still tell you to eat healthy sugars, don't eat the processed sugars, eat the healthy whole grain sugars, don't eat red meat, uh, um, don't drink sodas, all that kind of nonsense. Well, not drinking sodas is a good idea, but all that kind of nonsense because they can't wrap their heads around the fact that a ketogenic diet is a healthy diet. So here's what we need to do. When you go and see your cardiologist, don't tell them you're on a keto diet. They'll hate you for it. Oh, your LDO, it's so dangerous for you, it's so bad for you. Don't tell them you're on a low-carb diet. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them you're on a high-fat diet. Tell them you're on a euglycemic diet. You're on a diet to keep your blood sugar level. Hey, doc, I'm on a euglycemic diet. And more and more, that is becoming the catchphrase. Just like before, we called it vegetarian or we called it... Uh, no, those are gone. What we're calling it now is a plant-based diet. It's nice and soft, a green diet, a plant-based diet. It's healthy for the planet. P.S. it's not, but that's the euphemism. The best euphemism you can use going into your cardiologist's office is tell them you're on a euglycemic diet. Euglycemic which is what you are. It's not, it's not lying to them. But they don't like the catchphrases keto or high fat or low carb. But euglycemic means you bring your blood sugar down. Kumbaya, they're happy. I know it's bizarre. I know that slowly the algorithm is going to change. It has to because it's wrong the way it is and it will become right. But how many people are going to die before they get it? More and more cardiologists are getting it. In fact, Art Agatston, the, the guy, uh, Arthur Agatston, the guy that invented or created the CAC score, has completely reversed direction and buys into the carbohydrate insulin model. And it's so bizarre to hear at these meetings, um, Arthur Agatston is a, this, ma, this wonderful person that's upheld as this, oh my goodness, the CAC score is so important. Although still a lot of doctors won't get the CAC score. And yet, when, when you actually talk to Art, and he's a friend of mine, uh, in fact, I've got a photograph of him with me with him on my, on my desk that I talk to patients about. But he, if they actually knew him as a human being and they knew what his philosophy was, it's in direct conflict with what they're trying to promote. But the new catchphrase, folks, is a euglycemic diet. I am the carb addiction doc. If you want to be on a euglycemic diet, to reduce cardiovascular disease, to reduce your high blood sugar, your hyperglycemia, come and give us a shout. But we'll do it properly. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. Text us, call us, WhatsApp us, 561-517-0642. And if there's value to this, support us. Support us financially if you don't mind. All of these videos, we're running at a fiscal deficit. And we produce this, we want to keep it free, we are toying around with a few ads to support us financially, but the best you can do is throw a few dollars at us to our YouTube, uh, to our uh, um, uh, uh, PayPal account, it's in the show notes down the bottom. Everything helps. Thank you.